with this incredible move in the stock of CrowdStrike, up more than 10% today. Last night, CrowdStrike reported a terrific top and bottom line beat. On top of that, management gave better than expected guidance for both the current quarter and the full fiscal year. And it's now, I'm going to say it, feisty CEO George Kurtz talked about he's seeing great orders and, more importantly, maybe winning business from competitors. No wonder the stock caught fire today. So can it keep running? Let's take a closer look with Mr. Kurtz, the co-founder, president, and CEO of CrowdStrike. Find out more about the quarter and the future. Mr. Kurtz, welcome back to Mad Money. Great to be here, Jim. All right, so George, I had a, a, a kind of a chill when I got to maybe your 12th paragraph where you started to talk about how, you know, cloud today, battleground for cyber attacks, their generative AI, which we all love, right, is an adversary force multiplier. George, when I read that, I said, maybe the bad guys have jumped ahead of the, of the good guys. Is that going to happen? Absolutely, Jim. What we're seeing right now is the use of generative AI to really democratize some of the very esoteric techniques and attacks and make those techniques available to folks maybe that don't have the same sophistication and skill level. And what we talked about in the earnings call is the ability to create more adversaries with lower skill levels, but operating at a much higher skill level, leveraging generative AI. Of course, on the security side, we leverage generative AI to help protect our customers. So uh, it's going to be the battle of AI uh, in the future. But you know, we've got companies like United Health, and I've had the privilege of interviewing them many times. This is one of the most sophisticated, best-run companies in the world, George. And yet they have seemingly been caught up in a hack that, that I would have thought would have been stopped or caught earlier. I mean, these are great. You know, a great company can just still get hacked. I'm sure they had systems. Well, when you look at any company uh, that's out there, we've talked about this before, it is so easy to become a victim. And um, I always look at this as, you know, not, not blaming the victim, but focusing on how uh, determined the adversaries are. And almost any company is going to have an incident. You're going to have adversaries get in. And one of the things that we've really focused our efforts on, Jim, as you know, many years coming on the show, is stopping the breach, not just stopping malware. And you have to instrument your security for not only protecting against these systems, but also protecting against identity, which was an outstanding business for us, as we called out over 300 million in ARR, uh, up uh, dramatically uh, quarter over quarter and year over year. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, because identity, there are others who have taken that crown, or at least think they have that crown, but it's so integral to trying to get the bad guys that I'm just, now you were just able to put it in on your platform, correct? We, we did, and I think that's the beauty of the platform is with the single agent, single platform, single console, uh, it's very easy for us to add new capabilities. When we think about identity, that's a broad term, we focus on identity protection. You have identity creators like Azure and Microsoft. You have identity uh, aggregators like Ping and Okta, and you have companies like ours that are focused on identity protection. That's a critical element to having the full stack of a zero trust architecture, and it's served our customers really well. Now, there were two issues that came up. I want to, ta I want to tackle them ahead of one because I don't want to be like, oh, Jim owns this Palo Alto first Chapel Trust, so he's not going to take on anybody as Chapel Trust. I don't play that way. Uh, CrowdStrike Holdings, UBS, no fatigue here. Morgan Stanley, uh, no spending fatigue here. Now, these are references to when Nikesh was uh, Aurora, who's the CEO, and I know you and I think a great deal, but he did use the term fatigue, and it may have been misinterpreted, whatever. Let's just describe whether you're seeing any fatigue anywhere in the whole food chain of, cy of cybercrime and who, what people are trying to do to stop it. Well, we're certainly not seeing fatigue in cybercrime. That's been more active than ever. And really, I think there's a lot of fatigue in the, uh, in the companies that are saddled with legacy technologies and having to Band-Aid different technologies together and platforms. What customers are focused on and what we're, we're focused on delivering for them is the right outcome, stopping breaches with a simple, single platform that allows them to add capability seamlessly without multi-month implementations and without complexity. And you're seeing that in the results, and I think the numbers in Q Q4 speak for themselves. Um, and that is something, you know, Jim, we talk about overnight success. This has been in the making for many, many years, and I've talked to you about being the sales force of security. And uh, this is something that we're delivering. Okay, now let, let's switch directions here for a second. I'm going to read a paragraph that I thought was pretty frightening. And this is a, w a win that you had. An eight-figure multi-year win in a Fortune 100 business where the Falcon platform displays five different products with recent breaches costing them hundreds of millions of dollars? Man, this is going on and we don't even know it? 
Well, there's a lot of costs associated with this, Jim. And, uh, you know, now with the SEC disclosures, you have a lot more uh, visibility. Before that, you didn't necessarily. And when you look at how much it costs in ransomware, you're talking about tens and tens of millions of dollars of single ransoms being paid. Then you look at the cleanup, the downtime, the impact. Uh, you look at the legal fees. You look at the lawsuits. Immediately when this happens, you've got all the lawyers that uh, are about to create these class action lawsuits. So you put all this in a bucket and you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. It, it, this is it's just incredible to me. And you've really been able to be the first person to explain exactly how horrendous this is for corporate America. Now, this is another one that bothered me. Wins from the quarter include a seven-figure deal with a mega cruise line using a next-gen product that can never be fully deployed. Upgrades and operations were disaster. Who sells products like this? Well, this is the challenge uh, in, in the security industry, and that is uh, one platform is not the same. You can create PowerPoints, and I always said I've never seen a PowerPoint that was wrong, that looked the same until you actually implement the product. Something like CrowdStrike Falcon that was built from the ground up to be easy to install, easy to deploy, and easy to manage. And we see this time and time again. People may try to buy something. May, they may think it's cheaper. It's not. Free is not free. Cheap is uh, it, you get what you pay for. In this particular case, you're talking about uh, customers that had incidents, they had issues, and uh, more importantly, they had technology they couldn't deploy and operate. But one last one. We collect trillions of threat signals. Well, I was thinking maybe it's going to be yearly, maybe, uh, I don't know, monthly. Uh, daily? Trillions? Daily. I mean, come on. Trillions. If, if 10 get through, we could destroy the banking system. I don't, want to be, I don't want to be over. You know what I mean. I'm saying that a yeah. bank, if you're J.P. Morgan, you can't afford to have one of these. Well, there's a lot of companies out there, and, and just on the banking side, we protect 15 of the top 20 banks in the world, right? So when we think about the signals that we get from the industries, part of our whole goal and philosophy has been community immunity. We take, as, as we built a data platform in Falcon, we take these signals we understand what they look like. We use our, J our AI and generative AI on top of all this massive data sets. And then that is then continually learning and protecting our customers. And that's the outcome they're looking for. Well, look, I'm going to congratulate you. Yeah, you are taking names. You're taking business. And you're doing a remarkable job. And as you said, you've never missed George Kurtz is the co-founder, president, and CEO of CrowdStrike. I want everyone to read his conference call before you buy this, and you will understand why I'm so excited about this situation. Thank you, George. Great to see you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, Mike's back after the break. Coming up, energy has its ups and downs, but can investors set their watches to this power player's dividend? Kramer's got the CEO next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.